this pesticides are hazardous to human health. And um, if you think about it, pesticides are chemicals that are designed to either kill or harm other living things. So it's not surprising that they would also cause problems for us. And the second thing I wanted to talk about is the kind of special um, impact that pesticides have on children. Um, I think um, everybody who's a parent or you know, a friend of a young child knows how um, kind of vulnerable children are and how you'll, you want to protect them from all sorts of different problems. And um, pesticides are one of those problems. Um, and there's a couple reasons for that. One, children, um, for their size, they um, drink more water and eat more food um, than adults do. This is because they're growing and they're active. And so if there are pesticides um, in the food or the water, they're going to get more of them. Um, also, and this is really important for the use of um, pesticides indoors, the way that kids play exposes them to more pesticides. So if you think about what a child does, they're um, you know, crawling around on the carpet, pushing around a little car, or um, uh, rolling around with a pet on a carpet, or um, just all the weird things that kids do. Um, and, so, and if there are pesticides in their home, then um, those kind of activities are going to expose them to pesticides in a way that an adult who might just walk in and sit down on a chair and um, you know read a book or watch television is going to be really different than a kid who's running around and doing all sorts of activities. Uh, another thing we know is that pesticides are frequently found on food. Of course, this is um, you know not something that you as a building manager have any control over. Um, but the interesting thing is that some of those pesticide residues that are commonly found on food are the same chemicals that are commonly used in indoor pest management. People who apply pesticides are um, probably the most exposed and, and the most um, at risk for getting pesticide-related illnesses. And unfortunately, in terms of indoor pest management, we don't have a lot of studies of um, what the health impacts of that pesticide application is. Um, and it has actually been um, much better studied in farmers, who obviously also make a lot of pesticide applications. Um, there's a, a huge study that was started about 15 years ago. It's called the Agricultural Health Study. And they're basically, they um, asked farmers um, from two states, North Carolina and Iowa, to sign up for the study. And then they're just following them through their lives to see what pesticides they use and what health problems um, result. And um, what they found um, is actually, I think, pretty amazing. Things that um, maybe you would have never guessed. So in this study so far, again, it's been going on about 15 years, but really in terms of a person's lifetime, that's not very long. So. There's going to be lots more results coming, but up till now, um, what they found is a number of pesticides whose use was linked to um, more cancer in these farmers, um, kind of um, emotional problems as well. So depression is actually more common in the farmers that use more pesticides. Um, something that I would have never guessed, and I assume that you probably wouldn't have guessed either, um, retinal degeneration, which is a really common eye problem in older people, um, where um, basically your eye stops working. Um, that's more common in farmers who use pesticides than in farmers who don't. There's a variety of sort of neurological problems um, that are also related to pesticide use. Um, asthma and certain symptoms that go along with asthma, like wheezing and stuff, um, are linked to pesticide used by the farmers. And then finally, um, diabetes, um, of all things, <laughs> is the effect of pesticides um, on pets. Pets are a little like children. They do the same kind of, you know, rolling around on the carpet and stuff. So they have the same kind of higher exposure. And in addition, 
um, we apply pesticides to our pets pretty often for flea treatments. And um, so some of the common flea um, treatments are the synthetic pyrethroids, which are the same class of chemicals that are commonly used in indoor pest management. Pesticides, um, unfortunately, are found almost everywhere in our um, air and water. Pesticides are hazardous to fish and birds. Um, I think ever since Rachel Carson, Carson wrote her famous book, Silent Spring, people have been sort of aware of this. They often say, and, um, and including companies who make pesticides, but lots of ordinary people too, like, doesn't the government test those things? Don't we know they're okay? Um, and it's just important to remind yourself that no, the government doesn't test pesticides. In fact, what the government does is require that the companies who make the pesticides do health and safety testing. And um, if you um, wanted to imagine a situation where um, it was easy to set up a conflict of interest, um, imagine this. So the company makes the product, they make profits from the product, and they're the ones who are going to test it and tell you if it's OK. Uh, there has to be something wrong with this picture. There are a lot of things we don't know about pesticides. Uh, the list is actually pretty long, but just one thing in particular that I wanted to talk about is that um, most of the time, if you use a pesticide in your building, um, you're actually not going to know what chemicals are in it. Um, some of them are identified on the label, and the rest of them um, are typically um, called trade secrets by the manufacturers and um, aren't uh, publicly available. Pesticides don't solve pest problems. Um, this kind of at the core of what I think about pesticides. Um, so let me try to explain what I mean because it doesn't make intuitive sense necessarily. So pesticides, um, some of them in particular, are really, really good at killing pests. Um, but killing a pest doesn't solve a pest problem in the long term. Um, and I think this is probably pretty obvious. Um, if you, um, for example, have a mouse problem and you kill the mice, um, sooner or later, a new mouse is going to notice that there's this um, empty spot that would make a good home and it's going to move in. Um, so you need to do something about what makes this a good place for pests, whatever pest it is. Um, and so the way I look at it is if you want to solve a pest problem in the long term, you have to change whatever it is that's giving those pests a good situation to live in.